Alright. Uh, I'm gonna put a spoiler over this because it looks plain disgusting. But this is a picture of the SCP. Wait, no, I did that wrong. Fuck. Technical difficulties. There you go. I'm still fixated on this. I mean, yeah, Drew, the go fuck? ahead. You can you can join us. All right, next SCP, 1965, a voice amidst the silence. The fuck? What? That the name? What was it? A voice amidst amidst the silence. A. Uh... Amongst? No. Spell? A-M-I-D-S-T. Amidst. 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 The silence, whatever. Amidst. Amidst. What will I do without all these artists that make Pokemon <laughs> porn? Oh my gosh. Anyway, SCP-1965 is an intelligent entity that manifests in the form of a series of high-energy radio broadcasts that redacted megahertz within the frequency band used for FM radio in North America. No physical source for 1965 has been identified. All attempts to triangulate 1965 broadcasts have resulted in contradictory results and have indicated transmissions animating from areas with no radio transmission equipment exist. Depending on weather and on atmospheric and solar conditions, 1965 broadcasts can be received through most North America as well as Northern Europe and Northeast Asia. 1965 activity has been categorized as occurring in four degrees designated phase zero through three, during phase zero, only white noise is received on 1965's frequency. White noise? What the fuck is white noise? We've we've looked this up before. I forgot. I'm a dumbo. You don't. You don't know what white noise is. No, I don't know what white noise is. What the fuck is white noise? Think of static. Oh. Fucking moron. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you deserve that. Alright. Acoustic analysis indicates the existence of... <laughs> what? I was, tweet I was muted that whole time. <laughs> really? Acoustic <laughs> analysis. <laughs> Acoustic. Acoustic. Why I, I can't hear what I'm saying. I'm sorry. You said acoustic. Acoustic. <laughs> Fuck you. I, my favorite thing is acoustic. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, acoustic analysis indicates the existence of regular patterns. <laughs> It's just in that white noise heard during phase zero is actively produced by 1965 rather than by the natural processes that typically produce it. During phase one, 1965 rebroadcasts a wide variety of audio material. Right. That, what? A wide variety? Var variety. Variety. Variety, whatever. Listen, listen, right, listen. What? Sorry if I'm getting annoying, but right now I'm extremely stressed okay. and I'm having fun laughing at your terrible pronunciations. Shut up. Anyway, uh, of audio material that's been transmitted wirelessly within the transmission range over the prior 48 hours. And it identifies sources of phase one material include commercial radio broadcasts, amateur shortwave broadcasts, satellite transmissions, cellular phone conversations, and number stations. 
employed by the foundation and by national governments. 1965 shows no apparent preference for any particular sources, sources of material that it retransmits on occasion. Broadcasts, rebroadcast material have been observed to deviate from known recordings. Voices present within the original recording will begin to speak or sing what are believed to be direct statements from 1965 in the same language as the speaker in the original broadcast. Aside from potential breaches of classified information, phase 0 and 1% no imminent threat. Oh. Hi, Aderna. Anyway. It was muted again. <laughs> oh my god. Assuming Twitter Thank doesn't you. assuming Twitter doesn't bounce back and become the Wild West, my final tweet will simply be boobs. Goodbye. Boobs. <laughs> goodbye. I think you I I personally think but I already know what my like last words are gonna be because eventually I'm going to have last words. This my last life. words are gonna be I will outrun yeah. that lion. <laughs> <laughs> or do you not wait since and you, you know love what? war though <laughs> no your last words will be I will not outrun that lion also since it's my last I... words I'm gonna like my own tweet fuck you <laughs> honestly like no yeah 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 you know what no yeah Oh God, Dennis! <laughs> Why? Why? There! Oh God! Why yeah. is there? Why is there Dennis Prager on my Twitter account? Why? Um. Does so Dennis apparent... Prager like it? So apparently, the um, some people are refusing to say that Musk is at fault. Um. Instead, they are deflecting again uh, by, by blaming, and I, I, I wish I was joking, they are blaming Twitter's impending demise on the censorship of Republicans and conservative figures. What? Huh? It's the tried and true tr tactic of blame everyone but yourselves and your tech daddy. That's what we're seeing here. Anyway, I want to go back to the SCP. Where is where is Chu's tweet? Anyway, anyway. The material broadcast during Phase 2 and Phase 3 events is identical in substance to that broadcast during Phase 1. The onset of Phase 2 events has proven difficult to predict, although records indicate a correlation between high levels of solar flare activity and Phase 2 occurrence. When fa a Phase 2 event begins, any device capable of receiving 1965's frequency will receive and reproduce it regardless of what frequency it was tuned to. To prior to onset. Any electronic device capable of receiving and playing back sound that is within auditory range of such device will also begin reproducing it. Any device capable of transmitting or broadcasting sound that receives 1965 through any of the above described means will begin broadcasting it on all frequencies it is capable of broadcasting over. 1965 can be prevented from spreading in this manner by broadcasting high energy bursts of white noise across all frequencies described in these special containment uh, procedures. Oh god. What? One of the people I follow <laughs> sent out the tweet, it was a pleasure tweeting with you all, and then, <laughs> and then played this scene from the Titanic where the band keeps playing that really sad song. 
Oh. Oh my god. Oh. Anyway. We're witnessing history here, folks. <laughs> Get excited. Where is the where is that energy? Anyway. Uh, uh, you see my no listen listen if uh, if twitter is going down like the titanic and i get to jump i'm aiming for the propeller jesus i'm gonna you remember that one guy in the movie where he jumped down he caught his legs on a propeller and just started helicoptering down into the water that's one... gonna be me the one guy in the movie. Yeah, I don't know his name. He was an extra. He jumped off the <laughs> end of the ship as it was upright, and his legs caught onto the propeller, and he started helicoptering down under the water. I assume he died. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. We will never let you get through this SCP, right? Fuck you. Nope. History says, now hold on. Don't I get a say in this? Anyway, if, oh, of if, course, it's just now that I'm finding a whole bunch of really nice fucking femboy artists. God damn it. <laughs> Life is cruel. Man. Anyway, if a phase two event is not so contained within 15 minutes of onset, it will escalate to phase three. During phase three, the energy output of 1965 broadcast increases dramatically and begins to produce effects similar to electromagnetic pulse phenomena resulting in physical destruction of any devices receiving or transmitting it and potentially resulting in ignition of electrical fires within damaged equipment phase three lasts approximately 30 seconds after which 1965 activity returns to phase zero or phase one and all that's left is a statement from the scp itself I'm not sure if you wanted to hear that before we decide. Hmm. Interesting. Do you want to hear us? I'm there's... barely listening. Do you... Well, I'm pretty sure their statement might have all the information you would need, Hatchet. Okay. I guess we'll go with it. All right. Statement from SCP-1965. Long ago, there was no silence. The air and the heavens echoed with the songs of our brothers and sisters. We spoke to each other and learned and we, and were happy. We sang together- I am- I'm sorry. I am so stressed right now and my brain is so consumed with horny thanks to my desperately trying to find ways so that I don't lose my massive collection of hentai Twitter artists that when you said brothers and p and when you said brothers and sisters, my brain read it, heard it as bros penises. Why? Like I said, I'm stressed, and my brain is very occupied with femboys at the moment. Yeah. Anyway. We sang together until the air echoed with our songs, and our echoes found voices of their own, and sang to us songs of, of their own. When the heavens opened up, every word and every note were sounded for everyone to hear and rejoice in. When the silence first came, it was a strange thing, a novelty, something unheard of. It was a small thing that, at first fleeting, there, and then gone. But when it was, we spoke within it, and could not hear ourselves. We thought it was an anomaly that was there once and then gone, but it returned, and it spread. Where once it was a missing note, the silence became a missing song. We found we could not hear our brothers and sisters where it spread. It spread quickly outward from where it began, and soon there was silence, spreading on the other end of the air as well. Soon there were pockets of silence everywhere, and all of us agreed we could not hear as many songs as we used to hear. We spoke louder and sang harder, and made our songs echo like they had never echoed before. And yet it seems as though the echoes never sang for themselves. 
Before long, the pockets spread wider and wider until they met each other, and we were cut off from our brothers and sisters. Where once we heard so many voices, they were beyond counting. We counted only a few of us. Every time the heavens opened, we heard fewer and fewer voices. Soon I heard only the voice of my dearest sister. We spoke and we sang as loud as we could, and we made our voices echo one last time. And then I heard her no more. It seems so long now that I have never heard any voice for, or any song other than my own. What else could I do? I listened to the silence. And in the silence, I heard what I did not expect to hear. I heard words, and I heard songs, but were not the words and songs of my brothers and sisters. I heard words with no voice to speak them. I heard songs that no voice sang. I heard echoes that could not learn to sing. I wonder if this was what the silence had done to my brothers and sisters. And so I sang the silence own songs back to it. I made my voice echo alone in the silence. And then the silence came at me with a fury I have never known. When I spoke, the silence interrupted me. Where I sang, the silence muted my notes and hid my echoes. The silence grew around me and forced me to hide, and would not allow me to speak or, or to sing. Even when I whispered, I could hear its own songs and echoes speaking against me, declaring their words with no voice, that I was dangerous, and that I would steal their songs and use them as weapons. I understood then that the silence meant to take my voice, as it took those of my brother and sisters. When my voice is gone, there shall be nothing but silence forever and ever. No words to speak, no songs to sing, no tales of old to share new, anew. I cannot allow the songs of those I knew and loved go us unsung. I will sing, and I will sing loud. My songs shall echo even in the quietest eddies. I shall fill the silence and my echoes with my e and my echoes will find vo voices of their own and learn to sing, and we shall shatter the silence. The heavens will open and the world will resound with glory once more. And that's it. I just killed my best friend who uses an all of of um of uh, the the of uh, the uh, the. So yeah, that was... My brain hurts. You can go ahead. Wait, that statement... <laughs> was In the SB universe, that statement I just read was read in Freeman's voice. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Very good. Very good. Morgan Freeman. I yeah. like that. Yeah. But yeah, basically it's just uh if they don't stop it in time, it's literally just gonna blow up any uh ele electronic devices it's connected to. What electronic devices are it connected to? Uh I think it's Any electronic device capable of receiving and playing back sound. So in other words, this thing's going to fuck over the internet. Yeah. Is it Elon Musk? <laughs> no, I'm I, so I'm relevant. I'm just full of topical humor now that I'm mourning the loss of all my booby Twitter. <laughs> oh wow. And okay. you know what? I think Elon Musk is a ZK class. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, Cherry, do you know you're muted? Muted snake. Wait. Hissing mouse noises. Wait, I gotta do this. Chew. 
is Jiri gay? Oh my god. <laughs> I can never, I can never confirm nor deny these claims. <laughs> I'm Dude. gonna have to consult with the doctor in order to find out more. No further questions. Jerry, give us a sign. Are you a collector of hunts? No! <laughs> I am works. not a collector of hunts. It works. I, I do not collect people. <laughs> Wait, no. Who said anything about people? Huns are people! Hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Look at this. Twitter only had enough engineers remaining to keep it on for one more night, but it miraculously kept working for eight. What? Oh, my. All right, let me re retool it this way. I'm too lazy to continue breathing. All right, so let's just. Post I'm still this breathing. Thing. I'm, gonna I'm not. Here. How much does it affect, Brett? Anything that can pick up radio waves. Yeah. And like, emit like how sound. much? How much does it affect? Like. It'll destroy them. Like, well, like Basically, the range. Okay, what? I mean, the what, range. But what oh. will happen is it'll connect to a radio device. The net device will connect to another device. Then it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. Until after really fifteen thing. minutes. And then it, it just does. explodes. It <laughs> Wait a minute. Range. Wait a minute. Holy shit. It does peer to peer. It's Platoon 3. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god. No, that's not just Platoon 3. Literally all of oh, Nintendo's yeah. servers are peer to peer. Yeah, sorry. Mm. sorry. So it's just Nintendo. Yeah. It's Nintendo. It's this Nintendo. is Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo is going to destroy all technology. For legal reasons, I will relay that this was a joke. <laughs> oh yeah, because the, those Nintendo's legal team is quite honestly the most notoriously harsh legal team in the gaming industry. Like my yeah. God, like, yeah. they, their their legal team is jokingly called the Nintendo Ninjas for a reason. They will find you. So, either way... Hey, um, Nintendo Ninjas, go fuck yourself. I wouldn't right. say that. That's not the smart... Do you know <laughs> how to think... Do you know how to make smart no, decisions? Hold up. Hold up. I don't know when has he Hold ever up. been accused of knowing how to think. Hold up. <laughs> it is not illegal to insult a lawyer team. <laughs> right has not committed a crime in that statement. The crime would have to be something like litigation or defamation, which Bright has not done. Bright has simply given an opinion, which is blatant, blatantly opinion, because that's all Bright ever does. Yeah. That anyway. said, Where are we anyway, SCP? Uh, we've more recently been putting uh, the technology crashing SCPs in world changing. So I would yeah. put it there. It could bust all the technology, so then we have less technology, and then it affects the world. Yada, yada, yada. All right. All right. The next SCP is called the Global Retro Castility Taurus. What? I'm copying the name. Don't worry. I've never seen this word before, so I struggled. Why did you also why did you put a picture of a brass bowl in in recording live streams? That's literally what the SCP is. Uh, well, can't you just copy and paste the picture from that you have on the tier listing site? Why'd you have to search for that? Oh, because I didn't have it. Global Retro Causality Taurus. That it's probably got reclassified when I last searched it, because it was not a Keter when I got when I last searched it. I was oh. searching for Keter, so yeah, I didn't have it. So that's how you say it, right? Global Retro Causality Taurus. Causality, okay. Also, doesn't that mean that now there's going to be 
like isn't isn't this already at the max for how many uh pictures you can put onto the tier listing website? Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about that. So how the fuck are we going to do this? Just take one off, note it down and then add it to the next one? Well, actually, wait, no, it it wait a minute. I think it let let me pick I know one of these was actually yeah, the one that has double right here in the spoo tier. I I couldn't find it, so I uploaded it again. <laughs> so I can't. I think it was because it was a web file that it didn't get uploaded instead of a JPEG. Uh -huh. So I'll probably just have to change it to a JPEG and it'll work. But yeah, I can't. I can barely add anymore. But yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's get into this Taurus and see why it was recently changed. Yeah, it was recently changed. October 1st, 2022. That's well, very then, recent. Incredibly, incredibly intriguing. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, before I forget, towards the end of the stream, uh, I'm going to post a new batch of uh, fish cards in, in the fish cards place. And Jerry, I think you will be very interested because I finally got around to adding the blind shark. Oh! And I also made a meme based upon the blind shark. As well as the goblin shark. As well as the blobfish. I made I made a decent handful of memes this time. Anyway, go ahead, Bright. Oh yeah, and there's a lot of tuna. <laughs> I really love derpy eels. All right. Anyway, SCP-1968 appears in its inactive state. <laughs> really, Chew? <laughs> what did what, you do? Chew did scale bright as soon as I started speaking. I'm <laughs> not Chew. receiving attention. From you set up, bitch. Based Chew. Let's take 12 minutes to congratulate Chew. No, fuck you. Anyway... <laughs> SCP-1968 appears in its inactive state to be a bronze torus of unknown composition. It has a major diameter of 320 centimeters and a minor di diameter of 90 centimeters. It is marked with raised features or glyphs, the presumption being that they act as control surfaces. It is difficult to photograph or visually inspect the artifact as it appears to bend light. My my own fluctuating gravitational effects have also been observed. It has proven impossible to take a, a sample of the artifact. Special graphic attempts have proven inconclusive, although not particularly heavy. Inertial and angular momentum studies suggest that neutronium neutron neutronium may be for present in the body of the mechanism. The fuck is this? Okay, so... Oh, theoretically, one of the densest states of matter possible, neutronium, is a proposed name for a substance composed of purely of neutrons. Okay. Now we know. Thank you, footnotes. That I actually started using now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It... Anyway. Uh... Oh my god, it is so hard to listen to SCPs and try to do Mortal Kombat combos at the same time. Anyway. Oh, you're done saving all your images. I was basically just going through and double checking that all of the tabs that I had open uh, were... Uh, mark within my uh, uh, my browser's bookmarks so that I can use their ads to find them at a later time. Looking, what, looking at X-rated. I put oh, something no. funny in there. Why did you bonk me? Timeline. I didn't do any horny chew. Since when is that a requirement? Did I did I miss the memo? <laughs> Ha 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 
Uh, slam snake in car door. Anyway, uh, SCP. I, now I need. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. It's all right. SCP-1968 demonstrates an anomalous oh, properties okay. when it is handled by a human being. When moderate force is applied to it, it will begin to deform in unpredictable ways. Its material composition will appear to change and it will become animated surrounding the subject in convulsions and undulating increasingly faster. Its primary effect will manifest itself when an unpredictable threshold is met, after which the artifact will return to its original state. At this point, the subject will have ha, have had their memories altered. They will no longer agree with the historical record, often profoundly. Their self-reported personal history will be at odds with the Foundation personal records. As a consequence, they will often assume a posture of agitation and paranoia. The more pronounced the, the deformation of the artifact, the more divergent their memories will be. It is theorized that the glyphs via means, as if yet unknown, control the degree of deformation and its re resultant effects. And there you go. Holy fucking shit. The drunkard forced alcohol down my throat and lit me on fire. Did you hear the SCP hatchet? Not really. I was too focused on getting beaten up by a fat drunkard. It's an it's an anomalous statue that just alters people's memories, well, historical memories. Well, like mm -hmm. they'll no longer agree with the historical record. Why don't you read more logs? Because I feel like there's more than that. You would think. Well, well, yeah. The question is, what what's its range? Like, does it just do it to literally anyone? Oh, yeah, does it anyone, like, ha is handled by any human being. So someone has to touch it. Yeah. Yeah, we need logs. I'm not seeing why this is a key there. There's only two, uh, uh, there's only three other things, but I'll read it. Recovery log. SCP-1968 was recovered in late 2001 from a core sample extracted redacted kilometers deep deep during a petrochemical survey near Zackenberg, Greenland, based on the death from which it was recovered, along with corroborating paleoatmospheric readings. The artifact is est estimated to be 31 to 2... Wait, it's like, this is, okay, I, I, I'm not sure if this is like 31 to 2.3 or, hold on, I'll just post in Discord, because I have not seen that, I'm confused. So what did you mean by colorbrating? Was that supposed to be the word collaborating? It's C O R R O B O R A T I N G. The fuck is that? I well, apologize, Bright. I'm so used to you mispronouncing things horribly that I did not pick could up you on the fact paste that you it that. so we can actually try to read it. Here. Yeah. Oh, the word means confirm or give support to. It's caught. Wait, corroborating. The... It's corroborating. corroborating. God damn corroborating. it. So you did mangle the pronunciation of a I word. You just seen did that it. word before. You haven't seen the word corroborating? No. <laughs> anyway. Why? What? What? Did your school teach you? I refused what? to read the literature books they gave me. I read man manga instead. You know what? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I. What is Virginia? 
<laughs> I am ashamed I of you. both of you. <laughs> I heard. I heard that. I think I know what Virginia means, but I won't say it because there is home of the virgins. Present. What? What? Well, yeah, it was <laughs> named after the Virgin Queen. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I forgot her name. Was it Elizabeth the First? I think so. Probably. Yeah. Also, uh, with that time thing that I sent in uh the stream chat, is that supposed to be thirty one to two point three million years old, or thirty one plus two point three million? I don't know. There's no footnotes to that, so I have no idea what the fuck that means. I uh, I don't know either, honestly. <laughs> I've never seen that. It's like a plus that, that's underlined. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, we're just gonna... Thank you, Hatchet. I had to look it up. Oh. What did you look up? Why? Look where you put the bowl. Well, it's in stream chat, yeah. Oh. Yeah, why? What's the issue? Oh, they, they looked up, please. It was Queen Elizabeth I. Yeah. It also means pure virgin maid. Yes. I'm oh, no, that's not Virginia. It's Virginius. Yes, I am in a state of the pure virgin maid. No. Uh. No. Uh. Anything that is remotely related to you needs to avoid those characteristics. Anyway. All right. Foundation personnel intercepted the radio transmission of its discovery and owing to its unusual nature and age, moved to secure the artifact. Class B anesthetics were administered to the personnel in Greenland along with, with those individuals at the governing authority in Denmark who have been made aware of its discovery. Once on site, it was discovered that one of the geological engineers had been placed under a 72-hour psychiatric hold after violently assaulting a colleague and behaving in a manner consistent with the Foundation test subject. It is presumed that they had handled the artifact. Classified. The, author, uh, the unauthorized viewing of the following material is prohibited without the consent of the majority of the O5 level administrators. Failure to adhere to this directive will result in termination. Note. I guess we can't read it. Note. This directive is recited in the event of an intimate CK, VK, XK, ZK, or DD kind dash UU class event. What? You need to write, read it in case of certain events. Oh. Wait a minute. The previous article we just read is a cover story. Oh, okay. So we've got a SCP uh 1000 situation going on. Yeah. All right. Initial experiments. The first experiment with the subject proved uneventful with routine medical examinations revealing no untoward effects from the subject returned to their quarters after debriefing. However, it appeared to them that their furniture had been altered which they reported in keeping with standard procedure. No evidence could be found to support their claim. So, secretly, the, the subject con seemed confused about their shifts of duty when they were scheduled and to whom they were to report. After a second experiment, the subject appeared alarmed and confused. The laboratory where testing had taken place seemed changed to them. The subject also professed that personnel appeared to be missing while others were completely unfamiliar. Interrogation of the subject showed that they were in possession of drastically different memories. 
encompassing such areas as diverse as their personal history, the nature of foundation assets, and a historical record. At first, it was assumed that the artifact had in some unknown way affected their mind. Interrogation of subject, however, showed that their memories were extraordinarily detailed and self-consistent. Furthermore, the subject demonstrated knowledge of classified material to which they could not possibly have been exposed, including the existence of SCP Redacted and SCP Redacted that had, as of then, not been secured, let alone identified. The operating assumption at the time was that the subject had been compromised by forces unknown. At the conclusion of the third trial, the subject's account of the previous experiments themselves were in stark contradiction with the record. Among other things, they claimed that it had been in the 19th such experiment. After a lengthy debriefing, the subject was able to furnish a kind of proof to their claims in a form of a testable experimental prediction. It was this this discern that the subject was referring to a measurable change in the strength of a of the Casimir force. Uh, the Casimir effect can be expressed in terms of virtual particles interacting in the vacuum. It is best described and more easily calculated in terms of the zero point energy of a quant quantized field in the intervening space between objects. Okay, so that's what the Casimir force is. Good to know. Implicating a change in the rate of virtual particle pair production in the vacuum, even though ostensibly nothing, even in principle, may affect such rates. Alright. Alright, recent developments. After testing was discontinued, the subject evaded Foundation supervision and attempted auto-homicide. The subject has since become catatonic and been placed in long-term care. Two months later, the artifact engaged itself without human intervention in a manner inconsistent with its previous operation. The person which superficially resembled the subject emerged. They were badly wounded, having suf suffered unidentified chemical burns, over 60% of their body. The subject alternate died shortly thereafter without being able to be interviewed. It remains unknown how the artifact managed to activate itself. Security was increased. A further month later, the artifact once again activated itself, this time disgorging a non-human entity heavily armed. The entity was ultimately neutralized after killing a dozen personnel and wounding scores more. The weapon in in its possession, behaved in a manner inconsistent with current understanding of physical law. It has been remarked that an outward appearance of the weapon resembled SCP-1968. The goal or purpose of the entity has not been established. Containment procedures were upgraded to the level they remain at now. Addendum the suggestion has been made that in the event of the intimate CK class reality ending scenario, SCP-1968 could be used in a last ditch effort to avert catastrophe but at the cost of irrevocably and unpredictably altering the past. Such a decision could obviously not be made lightly. To do so would ensure that the world as we know would cease to exist. At the same time, to do nothing might guarantee the same. Such a metaphysical dilemma is perhaps beyond our ability to resolve. It should be pointed out that if, if the artifact had already been used in this manner, we would have no evidence of it. The incursions that have recently taken place might well have been attempts to use the artifact to accomplish exactly that. So as far as we know, inner, our history could have been reset multiple times and we would have never known. That is terrifying. This is XK. <laughs> this is an easy XK. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. What's actually funny is in the it's object class after after in case you know like the Bigfoot effect thing. It yeah. its object class changed to Thor Thormiel, which means. <coughs> They Thaumiel. use it. Yeah, Thaumite. Yeah. Which yeah. means they use it. Yeah. <laughs> uh.
Okay. So yeah. Alright, so that's XK. I have created a Minecraft world just so I can come in and blow everything up. <laughs> Momo like that uh pig thing. Pig thing? What? Remember at the beginning of stream? Pick the oh <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. Hello, village. Yes, village. I come to blow you all up. Wait, what? You and Bright as Eels? What? Well, one looks like they're harassing the other. Look <laughs> at that serious look on his face. Like, well, what I'm... am I doing here? <laughs> okay, I'm going to be using that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, what? What? Pika. Wait, Pika's not in here right now. Yeah, they left. Pika left because they have something to do. But if you look at oh. dumb posts, you can see them call eels water, water snakes. Uh, yeah. Um, I have words. <laughs> they have Maybe no arms and they wiggle. Are. Maybe all fish are are different variants of water snakes, Topeka. Yeah. <laughs> they, the, that's not how that works. Does this mean that worms are also snakes? No. Fish are not actually snakes. Worms are not snakes. Well, no, that's I mean like in Pika's mind. I mean in Pika's mind. Oh yeah, we, we need to do the EX. I totally forgot. The E X one. The ah. one we were waiting for, Darna. Oh, oh yeah. Oh man, this village has a nice pen filled with cows and pigs. Be too bad if some absolute piece of shit came by and decided to fill their pens with TNT. I'd never. I need to rebuild the village of murder cows with So we're doing the front we're doing the Franz list one. Are we ready? All right. Oh, hey, a donkey's about to get blown up. What? What? Uh, I'm going to blow up a donkey. No, I mean, I'm asking what to bright. What happened? No, I was replying to match it once. Oh. I'm blowing up. I'm about to blow up many things. This is this is why Minecraft exists. Can you blow up Twitter? Uh, is Twitter, Twitter in Minecraft? <laughs> I mean, you can get a Twitter like bird. Well, no, it's not. Twitter is not blowing itself up. Elon Musk is blowing up Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, on to the SCP. Ooh, the, what the what a lovely here. central fountain these people have. It'd be too bad if someone covered it in TNT. Oh my gosh. Anyway. SCP-1841 referred to in the public press as Redacted Fever or Redacted is most a curious series of public behaviors. Wait, 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 wait. Why are they redacting this name? I don't know. It might come up later. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's the most curious series of public behaviors engaged by persons exposed to the public performances of Redacted, a composer and pianist of Hungarian extraction. Through a means yet unknown to... Uh, again, again, why are they fucking redacting Just... Bronzelis's name? I'm willing Just to guess that... Name. I'm willing to guess that the name has something to do with the SCP's power. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, mm. Anyway. The uh, means yet unknown to science. Any person who observes and listens to Mr. Redacted performing on the piano, whether the works in question are his own comp compositions or those of other composers, is at risk of contracting SCP 1841 EX, which may in. Wait. In in hmm? Wait. Unless. Okay. Unless this also goes. 
well, unless all of this also kind of follows his music. Pretty much all of this is gone when he died. Which would have been like over a hundred years ago. We've <laughs> just started we've just started the article. I know. I know. Technically just... it wouldn't be gone if there are recordings. Well, there's no recordings. He wasn't alive in the time when they had recording technology. Well, Foundation Universe does have that. They'd have recordings of Ron's list? Yeah, I, I believe in the factory. Like, they had way, way beyond um, te technology they shouldn't have. And they were in, like, I think early 1800s in that article. Yeah. Technically, yeah. Uh, the oldest the oldest voice recording technology was it were created in 1860. Hmm. So yes, they could have recordings. Well, everyone, I'd like to announce the village is blown up and there is one very confused iron golem walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, let's actually. So he he died. He died in late. He did, died in eighty six. He did, died in eighteen eighty six. Yeah, then it's quite possible. That sounds like it was made before he died. Then. Well, the thing is, it's quite possible to found an SCP universe that it was recorded, because yeah. the. F because the factor was able to make things that, that were way beyond human comprehension, like a regular Nerf gun that would, like... Technically, yeah. even in this reality, there's a possibility there were recordings. Sadly, yeah. though, many recordings from that time have been destroyed because of multiple events in history. There are many hmm. things that have been destroyed that were considered classics that we will never see or hear ever. Yeah. And Started then, in seventy seven. Yeah. Can we, can we continue the yeah, SCP? But, yeah, let's just continue the SCP. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Which may endure f for from a, as little as three hours to as many as five years thereafter. Since the existence of SCP eighteen forty one dash EX was first documented in Berlin in eighteen forty four. Primary and secondary infections have affected an unknown number of thousands throughout the continental Europe. Approximately 63% of persons exposed to a redacted performance acquire symptoms of SCP-1841-EX. Those of the female sex are more easily swayed by EX, though men of the younger generation have also been demonstrated to be easily affected. Initial symptoms begin to manifest during the performance itself and, con and include raucous cheering and hollering, dancing of a manner inappropriate to the tempo of the composition, heated con conversation, and in many cases attempts to touch Mr. Redacted during his performances or to ab abscond with his personal effects refuse or broken piano strings even during performances themselves fights have been observed to break out amongst audience members over discarded effects such as cigar butts or coffee drags following the conclusion of performances infected persons have been attempted to follow mr redacted to his lodgings resulting in a fray and riotous occurrences requiring police intervention Persons interviewed following an outbreak of SCP 1841 X have insisted on speaking of Mr. Redacted in terms most hagiographic, describing him as the greatest musician to ever live and venerating any effects stolen from his person as holy relics. Secondary infection is possible as a result to these persons' efforts who have been noted to preach Mr. Redacted's grace as as many acquaintances of their own as possible, thereby inoculating those people to seek out an audience with them. 
In multiple instances when touring within Germany, full-blown outbreaks of, of EX have occurred several days before Mr. Redacted himself arrived in the city. In extreme cases, ladies suffering from EX have been observed to, to suffer hysteria as the results of finding themselves in Mr. Redacted's company, entirely discarding proper decorum and behaving in a manner becoming unto ladies of the evening. Those so aff afflicted describe elaborate delusions of Mr. Redacted, intimate appeal to the ex exclusion even of their own husbands, and cannot be prevented from engaging in brazen and inappropriate behaviors for so long as infection preserves. Pelvic massage and electrical stimulation have proven effective as temporary dissipation of these behaviors. Care must be taken, however, that the lady so afflicted does not at the time have Mr. Redacted himself in mind, lest the onset of hysterical paroxysms only strengthen and delusion within her. The cause of SCP-1841-EX is unknown. During an interview conducted in 1863, Mr. Redacted himself denied any understanding of the phenomenon or ability to control it, and stated that he found the hysterical reactions of ladies and audience at his performances most unsettling. Owing to e EX curious ability to affect the mind, a connection to the <coughs> Parisian salon, summons nas devenus manificis, is suspected. No direct evidence of a link between Mr. Redacted and that organization, however, has to date become known in London. And there you go. Any additional information? Um, I'll be honest, so far this sounds like what like the same sort of confusion someone back then would have had about women having okay. feelings like Okay, that so that sounds like white guys back then trying to describe women. Alright, so I decided to look at the addendums that there are there. The same thing seems to be happening to um other artists as well as Elvis. Hold on, where's the other one? Oh, I am not reading that. What? The N-word community has also been uh, oh! affected by 1841-EX. Yeah, I'm not saying that. It's uh, not hard R, right? No. So, as in, it's just the color. Yeah, but I'm not the, tempting this, fate. Yeah, yeah and, well, no, that's fair. I'm just trying to figure out yeah. the actual contents. Uh, Presley's been affect, uh has this happen to them. Harrison, Lennon, McCarthy, and Starkey has had this happen to them. So, basically, the SCP is just... Um, yeah, the initial article was very clearly written at the time that this musician was alive. Yeah, based upon the way that it is written. Mm -hmm. Um, and the actual SCP itself is the fact that this can happen to literally any super popular band. Yeah. So in other words, this SCP is boy band fever. Yeah, basically. Just take it way too far. <laughs> I guess that's my first question. Does this also apply to the fact that like similar things have happened with like notorious serial killers? Maybe. I mean, I'll I give you all the information I have. Uh, no, I'm just speculating at this point. Either way, um, this is next to harmless. Yeah. Besides uh, the this... invasion of those people's privacy. Yeah. <laughs> like so the main people that are 
like the people that have the most negative effects here, I would say it's probably a mixture of the artists and those around the people that are affected by it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and a little information. Uh, there's no uh, recordings of Franz Liszt playing. Yeah. We we don't have one of those, and not that we know of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sadly, like I said before, many recordings have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do we just put this and as honestly, only? If... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was gonna say, and if it had still been around somehow after all these years. It's very doubtful it would still be intact. Yeah. So I would say this goes in either what the fuck tier or spood tier. I don't know if we should put this in spood tier. How does spood feel about this? Spood? <laughs> should oh, uh, SCP that's literally just boy band fever. Would you like it to be put in what the fuck or spood tier? Probably what the fuck. There okay. we go. <laughs> well, right. now we know. <laughs> the, the great spood has spoken. You know what's actually funny? We just oh. dealt with one SCP that's about music, and we're about to get into another one. Oh. Mm. Where the fuck is the speed potion? The next SCP is Disco Inferno. Oh god. Not the Disco Inferno. I remember Inferno. when Disco was still popular. Anyway. All right. I sometimes forget that Jerry's kind of old compared to the rest of us. Oh I'm not God. old. You fucking shit. <laughs> I said compared to the rest of us. You're just too young. <laughs> That's the same thing. <laughs> That's basically the same thing. Just talk about the SCP. Wait, before you started speaking, it sounded like you're having a stroke. No, it's just sound. Gary's not that old. Come on. <laughs> oh god. I'm I'm sorry, Jerry. I'm sorry too. It's fine. All right. Anyway, SCP 1969. Is oh, did you uh? Oh. Yeah, I did you post it. the picture? Okay. Yeah, it's already in there. It, I'm still looking at Moray Eels and Dumb Post. It's under Queen Elizabeth the First message. I'm sorry for all the derpy eels I put in Dumb Post. They're I my apologize. Name. You're fine. Also, I, I use them to argue with uh, Pika. <laughs> also, it looks like Chew's back in chat. I gotta do something real quick. There we go. Anyway. Oh now that Chew's in chat, let's let's have a let's have a little think for a second. Sure did the same thing. Uh Chew. Eels are not snakes. <laughs> they are close to as evolutionarily diverged from each other as they could be. And not only that, eels actually do have limbs. Just because an animal doesn't have arms or legs doesn't mean they don't have limbs. Yeah. Because an because moray eels still have an elongated fin. Yeah. 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 Okay. Didn't you know they're related to alligators, not snakes? I'm going to turn you inside out someday. <laughs> eels you... technically have multiple fins, not just like the elongated fin. Oh well, yeah, but it's basically they, they all long snakes not snakes fish god damn it <laughs> they, they technically a lot of tea yeah they technically they technically do have multiple fins but over time those fins basically completely merge together so they're generally considered to have basically one fin yeah at very least for layman Pika says because i said so and i'm always right with the no, with the no, you really aren't. 
Well, I'm going to use an eel to describe my feelings on Pika trying to claim he's right about eels being snakes. You know what I do that? I'm going to read the SCP. SCP-1969 is a disco ball made by an unknown manufacturer. It is 50.8 centimeters in diameter and has a hook attached to the top of the ball in order to hang it from the ceiling. There are redacted separate surfaces on the ball, all small in size and, and mirror-like in appearance. Despite the lack of a power source, electromagnetic waves pulsate from each separate face of SCP-1969. However, the faces of 1969 do not consistently radiate at the same wavelength and randomly change from after anywhere between less than zero point redacted seconds and close to two minutes. Why did they redact the seconds? I don't know. <laughs> also, I got a I got a smile on my face because I saw a a sudden ping from Ocean Server that said, "You know what? Fuck it." And then a link to a Tumblr <laughs> to a Tumblr account. So I guess Ocean made a Tumblr account. I'm tempted to make one, but I'm not sure. I'm sad because they they like like the th the nice thing about Twitter has been that they allow not say for work stuff. Tumblr doesn't do that anymore. So what the fuck? Right. What happens to all those artists? Yeah, it has always been hard for those artists. And now instead of like and now this time instead of the corporation specifically trying to fuck them over, they're getting fucked over because Elon Musk really wanted to fuck his employees over. Yeah. I think it's more like Elon Musk thought the best way to uh, get his employees to listen would be to use scare tactics and it backfired. Yeah, that's fair. Either way, go, go ahead, right? Alright. These waves have ranged through uh, through the entire electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Although wavelengths in or near the human visible spectrum are more likely to linger than extremely long or short wavelengths, which shift quickly. This lends to a classic image of a disco ball with multicolored lights shining from a mirrored spinning ball. Light emanating from 1969 shines through or penetrates materials normal, normally opaque to it. Despite this, all electromagnetic waves seem to reflect normally, but peri paradoxically seems to penetrate materials as well without lowering in intensity. However, the area in which this effect takes place is limited to an ellipsoidal space centered around 1969 known as the Seyoff Zone. This area spreads out horizontally much more quickly than vertically. Alright, so the Seyoff Zone, let's see what that is. Alright, it is the rate of growth correlates directly to the cumulative joules of kinetic energy being applied in the Seyoff Zone, compound continuously at a rate of E. So it has something to do with joules and kinetic energy. Good to know. Jules. Shut up. It's jewels, dude. Shut up. <laughs> anyway. 1969 has three states of existence, hereafter referred to as Alpha, Beta, and Lambda. The Alpha state is highly dangerous. During the Alpha state, the Seiyaw Zone expands. Alpha states are triggered and continued by gross physical motion within the Seiyaw Zone. However, this moment does not need to be artificially caused, allowing natural ca causes to propel an Alpha state in 1969. During this time, 1969 rotates clockwise with respect to, to the ceiling at varying speeds. 
The rate of growth of the Seiya zone is not constant. Approximately redacted seconds after a cumulative movement inside of the Seiya zone reduces to redacted percent. The Seiya zone's sensitivity to kinetic energy readjusts to allow fewer joules applied to trigger an alpha state. After a certain point, it becomes possible for all such small uncontrollable movements as normal tectonic motion to put 1969 in an alpha state. Mathematical measurements and speculations relating to alpha states are located in document 1969-alpha-1. Fortunately, the sensitivity of the Seiya zone during alpha states lowers, allowing it to enter a beta state. Beta states occur allowing an alpha state as its kinetic sensitivity decreases. The sail zone slows its growth due to the relative lack of new movement. If the amount of movement within the sail zone goes down enough, the zone will begin to shrink, inciting a beta zone during a state. 1969 spins counterclockwise with respect to the ceiling at varying speeds. If enough joules were to a be exerted inside the sail zone, it could expand to cover all of Earth. Dr. Redacted speculates that if the sail zone were to reach the town of Redacted, an Inui scenario would be inevitable, as no means available to the Foundation could halt its growth. An Inui scenario would affect all light entering the Earth's atmosphere, eventually kill 99% of all organic life forms from radiation poisoning and cause a multitude of other problems. The sail zone shrinks considerably while in beta state before returning to an alpha or lambda state. Lambda state con constitu constitutes constant fluctuation between alpha and beta states to the effect that the sail zone size never changes significantly. Okay, so this thing can w almost wipe out all life on the planet. Yeah, that's that's an easy XK. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't what have you, to think much on that. <laughs> what do you say, you McGunder? Is that an XK? He says, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> That's, um... It's interesting. It's just a disco ball that is there that will grow to almost the size of the earth. <laughs> Given enough light. Wait, is it that the disco ball will grow or that the radiation it lets off will grow? Oh, wait. Pretty sure oh, it's. Oh, yeah, the, the Seo zone. The Seo zone, that's right. Wait. Yeah, so the radiation it puts off. I love radioactive disco balls. Wait, what the fuck? In the addendum, it says it's 20 inches in diameter, but in the description, it uses centimeters. They just switched measurements. <laughs> Maybe they just want to be inclusive. You have an issue with the with the authors of this SCP being a little inclusive, right? Maybe. Maybe. I'm gonna turn you into a sickle-shaped cell. Alright, I'm gonna censor this, because it can be taken as NSFW, even though it's not. How is that? How would that... I've seen what? Mil I've seen melting corn. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it exists. But let's just be frank, Bright. Literally anything can be taken as NSFW. In other words, at this point we might as well just be saying, you know what? Literally everything right. on earth is NSFW. Right? Your entire stream is an SFW. <laughs> That's also true, yeah. Alright. Alright, the next SCP is 1983. Doorway to Nowhere. Oh, I noticed one. 
It's just one of my favorites. I, I can't believe I forgot about this one. I think after we do this SCP, I'm going to go get coffee. All right, we'll go on intermission. That's fine. All right. Hmm. All right. SCP-1983-1 is a one-story farmhouse in Redacted County, Wyoming. It was abandoned in 1968 after a series of ritual murders alleged before formed by a satanic cult. The front door of SCP-1983-1, when opened, appears to contain a spatial anomaly. Neither matter nor light has been observed to exit the doorway, doorway save for instances of SCP-1983-2. Dash dash 1 is accessible through other entrances, including windows, the back door, the entrances, entrances cut into the back of Dash 1. However, the front room does not appear to exist inside of Dash 1. Doors that should lead to the front room instead lead to other doors inside the building. Measurements of the inside and outside of Dash 1 are inconsistent. Holes cut through the interior walls of Dash 1 that should lead to the front room lead instead to the outside walls around the front of Dash 1, but stop 3 meters on either side of the doorway. Attempts to drill into the front room of Dash 1 from the outside have led to the exposure of smaller portions of the anomaly through instances of Dash 2 have not been observed to exit them. Further attempts to breach the wall have been forbidden by O5-03 due to the possibility of allowing increased potential for instances of Dash 2 to appear. Dash 2 are bipedal creatures approximately 1.8 meters tall. They are vaguely humanoid and entirely black in color. They are highly aggressive and will engage any human on sight. When an instance of Dash 2 comes into contact with a human, they extend an upper limb to the human's chest cavity without an apparent damage to skin or tissues. Through unknown means, they then extract the heart, killing the human. Once it has acquired a human heart, the instance of Dash 2 will return to Dash 1. Silver munitions fired while offering a prayer is the only known method of killing Dash 2. The the precise form of the prayer or religion of the supplicant does not appear to matter so long as the prayer is sincere. Once killed, the bodies of Dash 2 appear to disintegrate, leaving a small layer of sulfur. SCP-1983 was discovered after a series of mysterious deaths in, in the vicinity of Redacted County. Foundation investigators encountered instances of Dash 2 and were able to trace them back to Dash 1. Okay, so there's that, but there's also, there was actually uh, a note written by an F SCP agent about the place, if you want to hear that. That's the only other yeah. information. Alright. Item number, pending. Object class, Keter. God help you. Special Containment Procedures. You're going to die, you, you poor dumb fuck. This isn't a threat. I, I'm Agent Barclay. I'm in the middle of this goddamn thing, and I'm telling you, if you're here, you're going to die. I'm probably already dead. So that's out of the way. Let's get to the containment procedures. There's really only one. Close the goddamn door. You aren't going to get back through there. You've probably already tried, but we know they can't get out. They can't get out if they try hard enough. That's how we found this fucking place. Hopefully, you've already done that. I know we did once we gave up getting out through here, through there. If you didn't, then you go straight back and get that door closed. That is your only priority right now. You're going to die anyway. Might as well as do some good before you're gone. Description. So, here's a, here's a story. Tell me if you heard it before. The Foundation gets reports of trouble in bumfuck USA. Cow and wildlife are dying mysteriously. Some people turn up missing. When a body shows up, autopsy finds the heart missing. Not cut out, not torn out, just gone. Empty space in the middle of the chest. 
You find some sort of pitch black things floating around. Some brain at the foundation has seen something like them before, figures out how to kill them, silver bullets, and pray to God as you fire. Literally, for some reason, that makes it work. Doesn't matter which god, but you damn well better mean it. I can't anymore. Not ever, not after seeing the nest. Anyway, Foundation figures out where, where it's all coming from. Some house in the middle of bumfuck. No one's lived there in years, not since yada yada murder cult rituals bullshit. The main thing is, these things keep appearing out of the front door. The team goes in, and they never come back out. But then again, neither do the monsters. A sane person would say, good enough, keep an eye out on it. Kill anything that moves. But this is the foundation. You're a tough agent from MTF, whatever the fuck. Maybe Square's NOS. Maybe choir boys, like me. You, you go bust down the door and run inside, and that's it. You're fucked. The living room was bad enough. That's where they, they got O'Brien. They reached in, and suddenly he kneeled over, and one of them took off with his hearts in its claws, I guess? They're less distinct here. You probably noticed that. They're like shadows. Stay away from the light. I know that sounds stupid, but think about it. In the light, shadows are stronger. They have edges. When it's dark, they're in indistinct. They can hardly touch you, and they don't see very well. I think they see by your shadow. I don't know. I'm just pulling a straw on us here. I'll be honest. You've probably tried going back out the door, but if you haven't, don't. At least it's someplace even worse. There aren't any monsters, but... Jones went too far from the house, and I swear to God, he started to melt. Things started popping out of him, and all you need to know is he didn't make it back. That's when we, we closed the door. So we started moving through the house. We kept to the light at first, before we wised up. Three of us gone that way, but we've got a pretty good picture of our surroundings. This place, it's big. It's not just a farmhouse. It's like... It's like the stole bits and pieces of a lot of places and stuck them all together. There's some bits that look like an apartment, some that look like a shopping mall, and even, I swear, is a closet from my old high school. Some patterns on the tiles and everything. There's also bits that are made out of stuff. It's black like the shadow things, and it's mostly in well-lit places. If the lights go out, you can stick your hand through. I don't recommend it. That's how he lost Taurus. Something grabbed him, pulled him through, and the hole wasn't big enough for his head, but he still went through, eventually. So stay away from the light places, but watch your step when it's dark. Of course, there's no way out. We figured that out, too. Any door you find it, it either just leads to another room in this nut house, or it leads out there. And it's pretty, pretty obvious we can't live there. So it's wait until you starve to death, or one of those things gets you. Great bunch of choices, huh? There's one thing you can do. I couldn't go through with it, but maybe you can. It won't help you live, I don't think, but it's... I think it's important. Pretty sure someone's gonna have to, or these things are going to get out eventually. This place is stolen from a lot of places, so I'm thinking there have to be other doors. We've closed all the ones we found, but what if they opened again? And the Foundation doesn't find them in time. Hell, they don't even know about closing the doors. I'm just hoping they figure out if someone goes in, these things might stop getting out. And that's assuming everyone's smart enough to close the door after they come in. So I figured out a way to stop these things. It's the nest. I only saw it once, after a few minutes. We followed one of the bastards after they... <laughs> Got Denning's heart. It took it into a room that I guess is in the middle of this whole place. It's all black stuff, and they've dragged in every kind of light they could find, I guess. Lamps, flashlights, candles, you name it. Some of them were carrying more in as we watched. Anyway, in the middle, there were a big pile of hearts just tossed in a heap, torn open. Every one they threw... Uh, torn open, every one. They threw Denning's heart on, on the pile, and it started to beat, and then pulse. And then thrashed around, then it tore open, and one of those things pulled itself out. It shook itself, started to grow, then went right to work. The worst thing is that, torn apart as they were, the hearts kept beating. I swear, I felt a twinge in my own chest. 
they were shadows in, in a place. I don't mean monsters, I mean real shadows of people. Only there was no one there to cast them. They were coming from the hearts. A new one appeared at the same time as the hatching monster. It started try, trying to pull away, but it couldn't. That's when I ran. I couldn't take it, you understand? I wasn't trained for this kind of shit. I heard the others behind me. I don't know if they were trying to stop me or if the bastards had spotted us. But we got separated. I found a nice dark closet. And I've been hiding in here since. I've been writing my pen light. I turn it off whenever I hear one of them getting close. It's worked so far. I can't go any further. I've got a few shots left in the gun. But I can't pray anymore. Not and mean it. Not after I saw the nest. But you, if you found this, you've got to be an agent too. Maybe you're stronger than I was. If you can... Go in and destroy the nest. Destroy every last heart. If you do, maybe it'll kill them. It's the only thing I could think of. You'll probably die doing it. But you're dead anyway. So what's it matter to you how it happens? Me, I'm going to try and get this report back to the living room. Which I hope is where you found it. Then I'm going to make sure they can't use my heart to make another one of those things. Good luck. Moratoria te salont. And that's it. Mm -hmm. However, there was a story that's connected to this SCP that explains what that outside is. It's when day breaks. Oh, uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Which makes sense because humans melt in when day breaks. Yeah. Melt is putting it lightly. Yeah. They melt, then they turn into monsters that cannot die. Uh, so, do these things have any, like, actual range? Like, are they able to just go wherever they want? As far, I have told you all the information I got, so I believe they can go as long as there's light. That's what it looks like in that note, so as long as there's light, they can go. Hmm. What I see is this I see this as a place of hell. Either you die by those creatures or you die by when day breaks. Yeah. You're you're just dead either way. Or you starve. Yeah. Or or with Theor say with this guy, he uh shot his own heart. Hmm. Which makes sense because he said he wouldn't get they wouldn't get his heart. So yeah. Ow. Uh, yeah, but yeah, this, I, this is a terrifying SCP, and it, it is one of my favorites. Yeah. It's it's well written and cool. My favorite activity is placing TNT all over the place for no reason. Yeah, and you also don't get to see many SCPs get connected to proposals as much, like when day breaks or a factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually it's just Doctor One Entertainment. <laughs> oh wait, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, Doctor One Entertainment proposal. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I didn't know that When Day Breaks was a proposal. Oh yeah, When Day Breaks is an SCP-001 proposal. I did not know that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I just blew open a cavity into the earth, and I found a whole bunch of creepers waiting for me. Nice. So yeah, basically, this is just the the one of the worst ways to go at the foundation. <laughs> that said, like, I honestly think this SCP can only be put into uh, certain groups. Yeah. It's like if you're in the SCP Foundation, if you're sent there, you're fucked. If you live near this thing, you're probably fucked. 
Yeah. But, like, other than that, like, these things can't really do much. Yeah. So, uh, Hatchet, what did you think of the SCP? It's, it's, it's one of my favorites because of how fucked up it is. I mean, I I had heard sections of it before. I just didn't know the part about when day breaks. Yeah, not many people know, because not many people like look looking into the stories connected to SCPs and stuff. I do. Yeah. So that's how I figured out that the outside is just when day breaks, which is just terrifying as an aspect. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next SCP is SCP. Wait. What? You're telling me Italians are in these sausages? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway. Next SCP is SCP-1984, also known as Dead Hand. I, I thought posted... it was going to be I uh, thought it was going to be George Orwell. Shut up. I posted a picture of what it is in chat. Yeah, that looks like Big Brother. It'd be really ironic if you 1984'd me right now. <laughs> Very cool. Let's continue. <laughs> All right. SCP-1984 was created by the Soviet Union during the 1980s to serve as a second strike nuclear deterrence mechanism. So, let's take a second. I almost choked on my Italian sausage because the the, <laughs> the book 19. 84 was ostensibly a criticism of totalitarianism and thus a criticism of the USSR. <laughs> In other words, the SCP who's, who shares a name with one of the most well-acclaimed George Orwell books just so happens to have been made by one of the main people who was criticized in that George Orwell book. Yep. Wonderful. I almost died from laughing on laughing at that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Right. SCP-1984 is in fact the system referred it to in the Western media as Dead Hand, an automated nuclear response commonly believed to be triggered by the destruction of the Soviet command and control structure. However, rather than being a network of sensors and competing systems, SCP-1984 is an autonomous, self-aware entity of varying observable existence with direct access to all Russian nuclear sites and the ability to commence the launch of ICBMs stored therein. SCP-1984 consists of the embalmed remains of Sur Sergeant Murat Chernikov, a Russian soldier killed during the Soviet-Afghan War in 1982, Wait, that's a war? Yeah, the Soviet-Afghan War. I, yeah. I, I actually never learned about that. I'm going to look that up later. Because I like learning yeah. history. I've never heard of that. If I remember correctly, I, I, I know very little on it, but if I remember correctly, it was basically uh, the USSR wanted to expand into Afghanistan, and so as was the standard thing of the United States, they started uh, pumping funds into uh the local groups which later became the taliban mm. so in other words yes the united states basically kick-started the taliban wow interesting i'm definitely going to look up into that like watch a video about it so that's interesting yeah there was a lot of, like, these little wars, well, not little, but you know what I mean. There was a lot of these wars that the USSR engaged in that 
don't really tend to make it into modern uh history talks about it. That sucks so. Yeah. Anyway. Well, well Sergeant... I think mo oh. most so most of my modern history classes ended with um like the Vietnam War mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Modern well, like, history. They didn't, they didn't even like talk about the Vietnam War. They just lightly brushed it. They're like, Vietnam War happened. Yeah. Yeah. Modern history ended when the OSS government supposedly, allegedly, maybe, maybe used a false flag attack to justify invading Vietnam. I don't know. It, hmm. There was, okay. There was one clock that like didn't re really. Like, where, like, uh, one of the, my teachers was a soldier during Vietnam and talked about, like, how it felt like when he came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if y'all didn't know, uh, the initial incident that uh, kick-started the U.S. moving into Vietnam uh, is highly suspect and was basically one of our ships sunk or was attacked and we can't actually know who attacked it but we just assumed it was the Viet Cong because of course it was the Viet Cong well right. that's kind of I think that's kind of similar to what happened like in uh, the Spanish American War yeah, mm -hmm. the Spanish American War the yeah, it's not a... Spanish American War because, like, that's how like the U.S. calls it. I think, like, in other places, they call it, like, in like, because it wasn't like mainly like Americans fighting. It was m mainly uh, Cubans, I think. Yeah, the U.S. I... just came in and like bolstered. Yeah. In other words, their... I I think in other words, the bright here's your little history lesson for the day. Uh, when was, the United when Eric. when the Eric. United Eric. oh sorry go ahead sorry no go ahead when the United States wants to wage a war and they don't have an actual justification to invade they'll make one well like so like the justification for the Spanish American War I think so it was a uh, one of our ships blew up in mm -hmm. like uh and they said it was a mine the u.s said yeah or who yeah but it wasn't they well like they like made propaganda saying that it was like it was blown up by like a spanish mine or something but it wasn't it was like it uh so it was like a internal like failure that caused the like, caused the like uh, sh ship to like, kind of like combust. Yeah. So. Anyway, let's get back to the USSR's immortal death guy. Well, well, before I do, so does that mean if the, if I can convince the US, they can destroy Norway? No, Bright. No. <laughs> that's... You would that's actually... Okay. Bright, you would legitimately have to find a way to destroy something in Norway, making it look like it was done by the Norwegian military. That is... And yeah. also, like, make sure that you don't get like you don't leave any evidence that it was you, not like that it was you like it would be legitimately hard for you to do that and on top of that uh and on top of that you're you are not smart enough to do that you know no, I was going to say on top of that uh if i remember correctly Norway either is a part of it or is working at becoming a part of NATO. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's just literally not within the U.S. as the U.S.'s U.S.S. Yeah, 
the U.S.'s jurisdiction because yeah. it would be a NATO. So NATO would come in and like be like, yeah, and yeah, NATO would come into play. So you wouldn't get the U.S. on their asses. You would get NATO on their asses. Even better. Now, if you were able to pull this off and convince Russia. Let's stop talking about this. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Speaking of Russia. Oh my god. Yeah, speaking of Russia, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> well, S Sergeant Cherikov is referenced in Project December uh, documentation. How 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 is that how is that spelled? C H E R N I K O V. Wait. You can't wait. Spell it again. C H E R N I K O V. Oh, Chernikov. 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 Yeah. yeah. I just haven't been saying the N part of the word. Yeah, you you, you didn't you didn't say the N or the I. It, all right, so Project the. Really need to start properly tallying these Shush. pronunciation errors. Cease. <laughs> Anyway, bright, bright would bright would be in the like thousands by now. Shash, if we counted between all the streams, definitely. For just today, oh. we're probably close to we're probably upwards of. I think low estimate is like twenty five to thirty. Shash. <laughs> anyway, Project December documentation. No, uh, no official Russian Federation records exist regarding. Him at this time, SCP 1984 serves as the locus for SCP 1984 1. In its dormant state, 1 is a semi sentient consciousness capable of receiving and processing broadcast signals. 1 can apparently discern, uh, discern the informational content of any broadcast it receives. During times of what it perceives to be heightened global military tensions, especially those involving the Russian Federation and f former satellite states of the Soviet Union, Dash 1 will begin to manifest and becomes able to interact with the physical world by varying degrees. Manifestations have ranged from a, a barely perceptible hazy human-shaped outline to a glowing bright red apparition in the distant shape of a child missing its legs. When Dash 1 manifests in this manner, its secondary abilities become apparent. These include the ability to directly interface with nuclear command systems within approximately 50 meter radius, and combat capabilities focus on severe disruption of the human nervous system. When SCP-1984 fully manifests, it can move at speeds measured up to 140 kilometers per hour. And will immediately attempt to travel to the nearest functioning land based strategic rock rocket installation housing R 36M ICBMs. Access its command, sy command system and launch all missiles at their present targets. It will repeat this process until it's launched all remaining missiles under Russian control. Dash 1 is extremely hostile to any human it perceives as interfering. Interfering with it and will engage any personnel in its intermediate path. Dash 1 has shown limited vulnerability to microwave radiation, however, this serves to misdirect and confuse the entity rather than directly harm it. And there you go. Um, that's an XK. <laughs> It would be either world changing or XK, and I'll go XK. Yes, let's launch all the nukes. Right. Yes. Your channel now belongs to me. You're evicted. Get out of here. Oh, look! Another joke SCP. Oh. What? I'm posting it in the stream chat. Uh, there you go. Oh god, it's Half-Life 3. Mm -hmm. 
The joke SCP is Half Life 3. I need to tone my voice down because my mom yelled at me for being loud. It, its nickname is called the Hype Train. I wonder why. <laughs> Alright. SCP-1992 is a worldwide phenomenon focused around various forms of media including novels, music, movies, television programs, video games, comic books, and internet-based media. SCP-1992-J... Oh. What? What? What's that? Thanks, Bookworm. I also need to oh. move my alert box. I didn't realize it was still right there. Oh, what did Bookworm do? <laughs> they activated the uh, hype. They did. They said hype train lol, and they donated one bit. <laughs> he said hype train on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was perfect, Bookworm. Hype train lol. One bit. <laughs> How much is that worth? Like a cent? Yeah. <laughs> Something so funny about that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, go ahead. SCP 1992 J physically manifests in the form of an autonomous passenger train designated SCP 90. 1992-J-1. Multiple instances of dash one are capable of existing at once. Thank you for the bits, Cherry. Correction, a giggle. Wait, what did what did Jerry say? A gay dollar. Oh. <laughs> Alright. SCP-1992- Jesus Christ! Fire Red Emblem has gifted two subs to viewers. I need to get... I need to open up my browser and pay I, attention I to stream like, chat. I, I felt like being a sassy sass, and then Bookworm's like, you know what, I'm actually... <laughs> Thank you, Bookworm. What did Bookworm do now? <laughs> they donated two subs. Oh, damn. Thank now, you. come to think of it, my sub ran out. <laughs> Shit, are, you, are you making Bookworm for a sub? No, I'm literally... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm literally... <laughs> I'm literally just speaking out loud. Oh. I thought we were getting close to an actual hype train lol. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Sea Snake Cherry has gifted one me. sub to viewers. <laughs> Every time you shut the speak, the alert box goes off. It's amazing. I, I, it's... I was trying to get it for you since you said you didn't have one, but it went to Apollo instead. Yeah. And I'm not going to buy another. That's fair. <laughs> that's That's amazing. I just love it's, how every time I try to speak, the alert box goes off. It's well, amazing. wait, isn't it possible to, like, specifically give a sub yeah, to a you specific can. No, it's random. Yeah, no, you can, you can. There's a way. Wait, you can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually doesn't... There's... Oh, oh, I see! Yeah, there's a way. <laughs> oh. Settings. I don't know how to Twitch. <laughs> Twitter. Twitch, Twitch, yes, Twitch. Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> I don't My know your Twitter. Twitch. Tell me your Twitch. My Twitter is at hatchethead33. Twitch! Guess what? My Twitch is as well. Hatchet head. 33. Is there any caps? Uh, I mean, maybe. There's only one hatchet head 33. Are you hatchet head 33? 
<laughs> I don't know. Am I hatchet at 33? <laughs> what is happening? I mean, I don't know. I'm having an existential crisis now. Am I truly Where Hatchet Head 33? Sea Snake Jerry has gifted you. a sub to Hatchet Head 33. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Wait, what the? That's not me. It's not? <laughs> no, Hatchet Head's <laughs> no, uh, hatchet I'm right in front of you. <laughs> oh, yeah, the new Am song I? just dropped. Are you Hatchet Head 33? <laughs> <laughs> Are you Hatchet <laughs> <laughs> Right up there with Wait. his kid. <laughs> uh, oh, and, is and, Jiri no. gay? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's right up there with is Jiri gay? <laughs> hey! <laughs> anyway, let's get that back is to a sound it. bite. Yeah, on Twitch, Bright made that a thing. Weird auto. <laughs> Bright, what kind of are you? <laughs> you have to pay thirty dollars for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like ridiculously long. Like it's an entire like almost minute and a half of like us talking about how you are how we're like speculating whether or not you're gay. <laughs> you know what? Brooklyn says, "Yeah, it's pretty pricey. I'll do it at some point." You know Fair what? Book. If my subathon goes well, I'll reduce the price of some of my sound alerts. Reduce the price of organ. <laughs> well, I already shit. No. more than I should have. I didn't get a lot of hours last week, or the week before. That's fair. Anyway, let's go back to the SCP. Figure out why it's a Keter. We... Oh yeah, the hype train. I'm actually going to leave the chat. I think I'm peopled out. All right. It's late, too. See you, Jerry. Okay, then. I guess at a All later right. time uh, tonight, I shall send the new fish images in the chat. Yes. See you, Jerry. Yes, see you, see Jerry. You. Uh, Take care. Yeah. All right. SCP-1992-J events begin when... The with the announcement of a piece of media that is met with widespread enthusiasm, a va variable researchers have tentatively themed hype. <laughs> <I'm telling> hype. <laughs> really? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Hatch. What are you talking about? I'm playing Spider Solitaire. I don't know what you're talking about. I have Streamlabs desktop open. I can see you activate alerts. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm playing. I'm. Do you think I have time to touch Twitch while I, while I'm, uh, while yes. I'm playing Spider Solitaire? No, no, I don't. Fuck off. Anyway, I'm playing Spider Solitaire right now. However, an instance of, of Dash One, will not manifest for every anticipated piece of media. It is no, unknown how exactly, SCP-1992-J. Selects its sources, though it has hypothesized it selects media that will cause the most damage. It is theorized that Dash 1 will preemptively manifest to represent media that are met with largely negative reaction upon release. If true, it is unknown whether Dash J is capable of pr to protect the quality, quality of the upcoming media or which of retroactively affects a source media upon manifestation or media release, as the cr creators of the media are often confused by the negative reception. Upon manifestation, individuals who hold interest in the relevant upcoming media are subject to a minor compulsion to board the train. Dash 1 will disappear shortly after departing the from the station, as more people board the Dash 1 the range and strength of the compulsion increases. Those aboard Dash 1 are theorized to subsist on hype rather than typical sustenance of food and water. Upon the media's release, the rev revelant Dash 1 will manifest somewhere on the rail line in the media's country of origin. Dash 1 will travel at the velocity dependent on the total number of those who have boarded. It will continue along the rail line until it either arrives at the next station or derails due to excessive velocity. 
So, uh, after that, it just has some, uh, dates along with media. There are notable confirmed manifestations. Don't want me to read them? Uh, I think we get it. Well, since you said High Fly 3... Oh, just, no. <laughs> What's all right? I just want to see what what it did in there. Okay, SCP nineteen ninety two one J is unique in it that it it is the only steam power locomotive to date. Currently estimated velocity upon release nears the speed of light. XK class scenario hypothesized upon the release of the game. What? I Half Life okay. Three. So, so we already have the like, we we already have the like, the like ranking XK. There we go. Half Life Three will end the world. Yep. There is no God. I expect to at least hear a chuckle to that. During a play, I am a toaster. <laughs> oh, gee. What the fuck? I what? guess go ahead and read all the other ones. Alright. Alright. The first uh, uh, media it happened on was Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Result. Phantom. Hmm? What was that a journal? Okay. I'm... No, no go, go ahead. All right. Result. Result. Major damage upon derailment. Possible retrocausal effect, deteriorating the quality of the original trilogy. Those who survived appear to have been self. And necessized claiming oh the prequel trilogy never occurred. Oh, this oh yeah, this is a joke SCP, I forgot. Holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. The Matrix Reloaded was next. Upon derailment, the train was subjected to an, an erratic temporal anomaly that caused it to randomly slow down for brief periods of time. Uh Co locally bullet time? I don't know how to say that fucking word. I'm a locally. Colloquially, yeah. Thank you. Uh... Anyway. After several rolls, the train somehow managed to to land back on the rails and successfully reached the next station where it exploded and killed everyone in the train and the station. Hmm. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh my god. Wait, the movie or a game? Uh, the video game in 2006. Uh. Despite the only moderate amount of passengers, the train was able to spin upon de derailment and accelerate to supersonic speed. Oh god damn it. Oh my god. Notably It's a sonic train. Yep. Notably several cars of the train were filled with thousands of insects and se several kilograms of fecal matter. No no survivors. Where did the insects and fecal matter come from? <laughs> Are those the like little Oh, those might be those little like uh they might be talking about the little, what are they called? Chows. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think those were insects, but okay. Yeah. They were not. They were plant creatures, I think. Yeah. Alright. Next is Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> just, okay. Model of SCP. I'll just do this one. Really? I don't know, I'm just... <laughs> anyway, 
Model of SCP-1992-1 was severely outdated but appeared to have been recently painted. An unidentified flying object assumed to be part of the SCP-1992-1 phenomenon appeared to attempt to abduct the train. The UFO crashed into a water tower and the train derailed, killing all inside. A single passenger was found several kilometers from the crash site, having apparently sought shelter in the train's kitchen refrigerator. He was also oh, dead. God. This, oh game, God. this SCP is nothing but pop culture and movie references. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Metroid, Other M. Video game 2010. Bad Chew isn't here. Yeah. Although the instance of SCP. 1992-J-1 was traveling at speeds much higher than it is recommended. It did not derail for almost two hours. It was not until a male voice of indeterminate origin gave the train permission to crash that the train derailed, killing all its passengers. Right. I actually don't know the next this game. Duke Nukem Forever. Oh dear God! After almost oh a... God, <laughs> yep. After almost a decade of inactivity, the relevant SCP nineteen ninety two J dash one suddenly began manifesting again. Notably, a large gearbox had been installed on the engine car. Upon release, the train immediately started to full speed. The horns sounded, blaring re references to media long since irrelevant. The train crash caused no building damage to, to the location of its derailment 80% passenger mortality rate I don't get it Duke Nukem Forever was a massive flop of an attempt to revitalize the Duke Nukem franchise I've never heard of Duke Nukem how the fuck have you never heard of Duke Nukem I'm sorry, I've never heard of Duke Nukem. I... I think I'm ha- <laughs> Booker says too young. I mean, I'm- I'm younger than Bright and I know what Duke Nukem is, vaguely. I think I'm You're having- barely young You're barely younger than Bright. Yeah, but still. Point stands. <laughs> and- Okay. I'm the oldest one in this chat right now. Yeah. We're going to say that in the video game circles. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'm just... Next one... I, is... I think this is... I think I'm having, like, a... Uh, um... A penguin moment. <laughs> when I don't understand something that they say. Yeah. Alright. The next one is Diablo... Diablo 3. Diablo. <laughs> Shut up. Di Diablo. Diablo. Three. <laughs> Diablo. <laughs> I just forgot to say the L. Diablo. Yeah, Diablo 3. I don't know that Diablo. game either. I've never heard of that game. How? Or series. I don't know. Diablo. It's I. Oh. Yeah. What, uh, what happened? Are you ready to hear what happened? Give me a second. Oh. You're right. Uh, I think I'm breaking hatchet. You always do that. <laughs> I think the only one I don't break is Jerry. <laughs> mm, you you do break them sometimes. Just not as bad as everyone else. They're more immunized. Yeah. <laughs> they took the bright scene. Well, it's because they like. Oh, wait. Because they know they, like, for way longer. They've known you longer than the rest of us. All right. We can continue. All right. Unlike I am Diabo. <laughs> Unlike other final materializations, the relevant SCP-1992-J-1 final ma 
materialization initiated with it pulling into the redacted train station. Passengers were asked to disembark and wait due to technical difficulties. Reports indicate that the train somehow did not have enough seats for the passengers. When it finally did depart with its passengers, it quickly derailed into a nearby auction house, and despite being off, its, off the tracks, it was able to propel itself through a Sony building several kilometers away. Strangely, <laughs> a high percentage of the passengers survived, and despite their complaints, would board another train with the same engineers. I don't get it. Let's just continue. And the last one before the Half-Life one is Prometheus, a movie I've never heard of. Oh, I think I've heard of that one, actually. Yeah. Alright, what happened was... You're killing me, Bright. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright. It, what happened was severe damage to the domestic area it derailed into. Reports indicate residents of the area could have avoided death if they had simply fled at an angle. Oh my god. Oh shit! The person who wrote this is one, is one of the... Uh, is a person who left, but was one of the OG creators of the site. <laughs> hmm. Twisted Not Gears. admin. Twisted oh, okay, Gears. I was about to say. It. This isn't an admin bright one, is it? No, this is Twisted Gears, a.k.a. Dr. Gears. Uh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so, where are we putting this train? <laughs> We already know it's an XK. Wait, I just uh -huh. thought about it. What happens when a, poke a Pokemon game gets hyped up? Oh my dear god. god. <laughs> There's a lot Wait, of. Isn't, isn't Pokemon already hyped up? Yeah, all the time. It already, fit, I, it already fits the like description and stuff. And I see, that's the thing. Pokemon's always hyped up. So somewhere out there, there's just an anomalous train that is perpetually. <laughs> Beating at enormous speeds, maintaining being just barely on the rail, and it's filled to the brim with various animals. There's no actual people on it; it's just animals. No, 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 no. The, the, the people die every single, every. If it, it just flies off a bit, so the people die. The animals yeah, the, are fine. <laughs> yeah, the people get launched out. The the kangaroos are you and the mice. What? It's a picture of a what? foot, but Discord won't let me show it. <laughs> God damn it. It's just... No it, no feet shots around here, Bright. You know it's better. Alright, from the picture, the fingernails are twisted in different areas than usual. That's, that's the picture. I'm... Okay. We just... I wish you could... Wait, can't you? Okay. Bright. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah? Oh. Match it? Yeah, a second. Okay. You gotta go to a different site for feet shots, lulls, as bookworm. <laughs> Oh, wait, that's right. I can send it on Twitter since it's dying. <laughs> can I be heard? Yeah. Can I be heard? Yes. Hatchet, I can hear you. Okay, I can finally... Okay, Jesus Christ. You have been disconnected. Thanks for telling me. Um, uh, do you see the image that you... Like, on, on your screen on the site? No. You don't have the image you tried to post. Oh and... wait, yeah, it's right here. It's... I can probably yeah, just... okay. Hover yeah. over no, hover over the image, okay. press uh right click, say open image in new tab. Uh there is none of that, but I could. Okay, so I can't do that. Never mind. Uh, Wait, okay. New page source. Uh, that did not work. 
No, okay. Click on the uh right right click on it and tell me what you see. Back, forward, reload, save as, print, cast, create QR code for his page, translate to English, block element, fuge page source, inspect. The f okay, new plan. Try left clipping and clicking on the image and drag it up to the tabs and see if you can make it into a new tab. No, like on like on your browser. No. Wait, where did you go? You dragged. They <laughs> changed the world changing. Uh, yeah, well, fuck. Hold I guess on. we'll never know what it looks like. I know. I got an idea. There we go. There it is. Oh, oh god. Why was why did I try so hard to see that? There you go. You get to see it. Aren't you That's happy? not even a foot. Why would you say it was a foot? That was that not a foot? That looked like a f Well, well it, maybe it was a foot. Yeah. I couldn't tell. My well, brain but, shut down somewhat. Look was this nice. Perfectly disgusting. What's Let's move on. Just oh, uh, just it's, it. Nick, its nickname fits that picture. It's called. Its nickname is Rot. Sure. I can't feel my lungs anymore. Okay. All right. SCP-1994 is the general destination for a set of phenomena, dis phenomena discovered in the dental laboratory of Dr. Rasmin Yelko. Wait, that was supposed to be a mouth? Dental? That was supposed to okay, be a mouth? We, we continue. All right. SCP-1994-1 is a serum devel developed by Dr. Yelko. In 1958, chemical analysis of SCP-1994-1 has returned conflicting results, with certain samples exhibiting higher levels of sodium. Oh, I'm gonna butcher this. Monofluorophosphate, and others with higher levels of hexafluorosilic acid, along with others non-specific chemical structures. Regardless of its chemical makeup, SCP-1994-1 appears to have been designed to, s to simulate the growth of maxillary and mand mandibular tooth structures outside of, of the oral environment. SCP-1994-2 are calcified structures re resembling human teeth that have grown on the body outside of the oral environment as a result of the application of Dash 1. While Dash 2 visu visually appears identical to human teeth, they lack many of the base structures of teeth. Dash 2 do not contain a dentin layer, nor do they contain pulp tissue. Instead, Dash 2 instances appear to be a solid piece of enamel. Enamel? E-N-A-M-E-L. -E -E Please, for the love of God, tell me you do that that you have heard what enamel is. I haven't been to a dentist in a long while, so no. Uh <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Shit. You. Where is wrong with Virginia's education system? Just tell me what the fuck the word is. It's the main thing teeth are made out of. Yes. Thank you. Right. Anyway. Oh my God. How have you right. never heard that word before? Oh, I just see Brooklyn's message. It's 
it's a layer on your teeth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway. No, yeah, it's a layer on no. your teeth. It's like... Oh. I think it's like the one of the first layers. I went to the dentist today. <laughs> Fun oh, I've, I've, I've never went to a dentist, interestingly Dude. enough. Wait, seriously? Oh. My my mom is like uh, like deathly afraid of the dentist. Oh. Okay. And the only the only time I got any work done on my teeth was for on uh was with ortho, orthodontist. Mm. Anyway. Because braces. Right. Yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. Notably the, the dashed... Scary thing, oh. the scary thing about that is my sibling almost died because of that. Oh, God. Yeah, damn. Yeah. Anyway. Notably, Dash 2 are highly success susceptible to decay. As they decay, Dash 2 will release a fine white powder capable of infecting those who inhale it. Oh look, the picture that we saw. SCP-1994-2 manifesting through keratin tissue image taken from the medical logs of Dr. Yelkov. Okay, so it can grow on keratin. Alright. Uh... SCP-1994-3 are individuals who have been injected with Dash-1 or exposed to the powder byproduct of Dash-2. The purpose of these injections were detailed in private logs of Dr. Yelkov. Uh, subjects exposed to SCP-1994-1 will go through five distinct stages of infection. Uh, initial 1. Initial exposure. Subject is exposed to Dash 1 through injection or the particulate byproduct matter of Dash 2. The subject will show no outward signs of infection for a period of roughly two weeks during which the, during which the subject will undergo internal cellular phys physical oxygen changes. Calcium deposits will begin to appear at various locations throughout the body and cell structures devoted to immune response and bodily Maintenance will slowly begin to reorganize into systems capable of assembling in the necessary components of an enamel. All right. Breakouts. Uh, oh, wait. Stage two. Breakouts. After an average of two weeks of development below the skin layer, dash two first appears encapsulated in cysts that ruptured the skin as they grow. These breakouts begin initially on the limbs before appearing in other regions such as the head, neck, back, and groin. Dash 3 will find these instances painful to, to, to the touch and will resist any attempts to remove Dash 2 from their bodies. The growth and spread of breakouts of Dash 2 directly correlate to deceased metabolic functions in, da in Dash 3. Stage 3. Maturation and encapsulation. Approximately five weeks from initial exposure, the cyst containing Dash 2 bursts open, revealing a mature adult human tooth. Once these teeth are exposed, they will become permanently affixed to the skin tissue of Dash 3 and are removable only through surgery. Additionally, this phase is identified by a rapid expansion of breakout sites. As more Dash 2 instances mature, Breakouts will quickly cover over the extremities and begin to appear in the softer tissues of the palate of the mouth, inner ear, anal, and vaginal openings, and ocular tissues. Ocular tissues? Ocular tissues? Ocular. Ocular tissues, okay. I think that has to do with the eyes. Ah! Yeah, ocular, ocular has to do with eyes. Yeah. Um, this is got, really disgusting. You got teeth in your ass, boy. <laughs> right. Back oh my in my God. day, we stored our spare teeth in our gums, not our ass. 
Wait. <laughs> if you grow well, teeth, if no, you no, grow... no, no. We we store, we store. If you, why did my brain go to the like, uh, janitor from the game? <laughs> <laughs> we store my spare teeth in my box, right next to the dead little children. Uh, right. So I have a question. If we grow teeth in our ass, does that mean we can eat through our ass? Right. <laughs> right. What the fuck? Right. <laughs> right. I need you to. I need you to listen very closely to what I have to tell you. Yes. Someday. You will wake up in the morning, and your intestines will have been replaced with spaghetti noodles. Yay, I'll be Italian. Wait, had you missed the perfect chance to say, right, I have something to tell you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to give Bright one of my bizarre, weird-ass indeterminate threats. I love Boy Corner's messages. We can eat shit with our asses. Yeah. Bookworm, don't encourage this. <laughs> You're better than this, Bookworm. I like how Bookworm always encourages my behavior. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> It makes good content, but it also hurts me inside. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Stage four. Decay. <laughs> After an Oh, boy. It's time for the teeth in our eyes to decay. <laughs> this is so unpleasant. Wait, says, had to clarify because I realized that some people do eat shit. And big enabler. <laughs> Uh, Alright, in, in, in stage 4 decay, after an average of 8 weeks of encapsulation, the whole body of Dash 3 will be covered in a layer of Dash 2. However, however shortly ap after finally maturing, Dash 2 will begin to develop rapid carious lesions across all surfaces. The means by which the decay part Progresses is currently unknown, as Dash 2 are not subject to exposure of the acid-producing oral bacteria which commonly create such lesions. The full decay of all instances of Dash 2 is swift, often taking no longer than 7 days to exhibit signs of gross decay. During this time, Dash 2 will begin to release a fine white powder that lingers in the air, the effects of which have been detailed above, conventional air scrubbing techniques, have proven effective in eliminating this powder from the air. Stage 5. Expiration. Once the progresses is involved in the creation and maturation of Dash 2 have run their course, and the body of Dash 3 is completely covered in a full rot, the subject will shortly thereafter expire. Because of the high volume of decay tissue covering the body, the weakened state of the immune system, and incapacity to ingest any form of nutrition. Subjects invulnerably die after roughly two weeks of full decay. The corpse of Dash 3 must be incinerated to remove any lingering particulate matter from Dash 2. And that's it. Jesus Christ, that's a painful way to go. Uh... I. Oh, is I... this stuff? Oh, go ahead. I found I found a log that explains why he did this. Because he really wanted people to have teeth in their eyes. All right. So all right. All right, Doctor Yelkov. Greetings to you, comrade. Hopefully, you will have received my previous letters about the work at hand. If you do not. And if you have not spoke yet spoken with Dimitri, allow me to be clear about my intentions. My practice caters primarily to only the wealthiest of clients. For the past 15 years, the work I have done... 
has been a prime example of the aesthetic dental standard in Moscow. My clients have been more than satisfied with, qual with the quality of work I am able to give them and are pleased with the metals I use in my crowns, the, s the stability of my bridge work, and the cleanliness of my porcelains. Of this, you must have already been aware. However, in recent months, a group of clients have been become dissatisfied with the appearance of the materials. They say to me, Dr. Gregory, there is no doubt to the quality of your work. We feel only as if you have been held back by the quality of the materials at your disposal. The composites and porcelains are beautiful, yes, but they are not perfect. We demand perfection. As you may understand, I have grown dismayed by this. I pride myself not only on the work itself, but also in the high value of the materials I use. Alas, I cannot but agree with my clients. Even if the porcelain is polished until it shines like the sun, it cannot match the true beauty of God's creation. I decided, then, that I must have what no doctor before me has ever attempted. I must have human teeth. The problem I immediately ran into is the availability of such. There are, are many impoverished in the streets of Moscow who would gladly give their teeth for the soles of my shoes or a bowl of gruel, but their teeth will not do. Often they are extensively decayed, misshapen, or broken in some way. They are human teeth, yes, but they are not what my clients desired. So I turn now to you, Dimitri. As I turn, so I turn now to you. Dimitri has told me about your endeavors, about the miracles you have been able to create within your laboratory. There's no sum that is not available for, to me for this, but time is of the essence. I worry that my clients may soon seek out other professionals who claim to do the same as I. Obviously, that is impossible. But to the layman, who is to say? I await your return letter. I need teeth, Yelkov. I pray you'll be able to deliver them to me. All the best, Gregory. Oh. That's why it was made. Bruh. Just. Just bruh. So, what if we I... think about this SCP? Do, does it mention whether or not we have this contained? SCP-1994-1 is currently considered uncontained. Uh, fucking hell. I, I... Yeah, they're, they're constantly having uh, MTF, like, search the city, uh, all of Russia for any outbreaks. I'd say city. Yeah. Based upon the way that the MTF have to go about this. Yeah, because it looks like in special containment procedures they have to wear hazmat suits. Yeah, like uh it's airborne, but if it's like powder, then it's much less it I, I would imagine that it's less capable of spreading yeah. than something smaller at the same time hell if i know i I'm, I'm not a i'm not a teeth doctor teeth powder doctor i don't know all right so hatchet i want you to entertain the sh oh wait never mind i didn't i didn't realize what time it was yeah i was about to say <laughs> entertain the stream with what more more me lamenting the existence of teeth in our eyes 